Hello, my name is Danielle Geis, and I am doing my artist presentation on Rosa Minkman and her use of glitch art. So this is Rosa Minkman. She is a Dutch artist who specializes in visual art, such as glitch art and resolution theory. And through the use of video compression, audio feedback, and glitches in video, she's able to create her own different pieces. This is her on the left. And then actually that's two of her pieces that include herself. I think that's really interesting that she includes herself in her pieces and her use of glitch art. I just wanted to show that off real quick. So Rosa Minkman is 36 years old. She was born in 1983. She was born in Arnhem, Netherlands, and she's a theorist, a curator, and a visual artist. So, glitch art is using digital errors or analog errors to manipulate electronic devices and digital data for artistic purposes. Glitch art has become more and more popular just through the advancement of things like technology and just overall the use of the internet in general. Glitch art is heavily created off the use of data bidding, and data bidding is the manipulation process of media files using software that has the intention of editing files or another format. This is what causes the distortion. By using a basic hex editor, the artist can modify information from digital files, things like JPEGs or MPEGs, and can manipulate the information in the files. Here are just some examples of her work, and some of these examples are used in the piece that I've decided to showcase of hers for this project. So the piece I've chosen for this project is a vernacular of file formats. Minkman created this piece in 2010, and these digital files can be found all online. It's a series of corrupted files of Minkman's self-portraits. She created this as a guide to data bend compression design. It is one of her more well-known pieces, and it's based off her actual pictures. The idea behind it is that it implements the same error in each file, but it uses another compression language in each picture. So this is the original raw image used. This is the image that can be seen in the majority of her manipulated photos that are a part of her piece. It is a little unnerving to look at, but I think that only enhances the overall feel of her work. There are well over 60 different manipulative photos that she took from a video that she created to get these still shots, which I will be linking in the sources section of this presentation, and I will be showing the video as well. But the stills from these shots are used throughout her entire piece of a vernacular file formats.
so that was the video she used for the base of her of her piece it's a little strange I'm not entirely sure what's going on with it but she it does seem to dehumanize her a little bit I'm not sure if that's what she's going for it's a little a little eerie vibe to it but I think it works with what she's trying to show so moving on these are some more of her photos from a vernacular file formats you can see the different colors used definitely look like the abstract idea of a glitch especially for me I can relate back to this from the late 90s to early 2000s and something would go wrong on my my chunky desktop computer and I'd see these beautiful assortment of colors appear and obviously it's frustrating when some part of your technology malfunctions and and it's it's so frustrating but uh, the bright neon colors you know they're they were always captivating to look at <laughs> And these are some more of her, the pictures so you can kind of see. And you can see how she would distort the same image. And some images you can clearly see her face in it. And then in the others, you got to kind of know what you're looking at to understand what you're looking at. So in this piece, Minkman describes the process of data binning. She allows the viewer to see how the files can be manipulated to create new images. Meekman describes the glitch as a wonderful interruption that shifts an object away from its ordinary form and discourse towards the ruins of destroyed meaning. Meekman explains a glitch as an actual and or simulated break from an expected or conventional flow of information or meaning within digital communication systems that results in a perceived accident or error she wants to enhance the failures instead of just put them aside and continuously start over. There is a cult following that has come around from this specific piece. Uh, the concept of adding something that is perceived as a negative thing to enhance the original file is a somewhat funny thought. But to me, it kind of stands as a metaphor to life. It may seem like a bad thing at first, but the way the individual uses it can decide whether it stays being a bad thing or not. And we see here that Minkman manipulates the natural foundation of the file formats to generate a new design with a new meaning. These are some things that Minkman had to say about her piece and her idea of glitches. She talks about how glitches are transforming from a cool thing to a hot thing. She started, sorry, she stated saying cool glitches are not just glitches that focus on a state and product, but on a process, a personal exploration or a narrative element. She continued on with saying that the genre of cool glitch art exists as an assemblage that relies on all the construction, operation, and the content of the apparatus, and secondly, the work, the artist, and the interpretation by the reader. Minkman continues on with her transformation of making cool glitches hot and her making the vernacular file formats, which aim to show the way she exploited and deconstructed the organization of the file formats into new brutalistic designs. So overall, there's an eerie aesthetic to her piece. Let's just show the imperfections in technology, which I think is interesting to think about, the artist intentionally creating this imperfection. When you think about society, you think of the overall idea that humans are imperfect and technology is supposed to be this advanced and save all idea that isn't supposed to produce error. And now we know that's not entirely true since technology does have its malfunctions, but now we can see with this, the roles are kind of being reversed where the human is more in control and purposely manipulating the technology to create the error. I 
I think the piece is supposed to be somewhat unsettling to look at. When I look at her different pictures, I get the overall sense that not necessarily that technology is a bad thing, but it for sure is a powerful thing and it can be somewhat dangerous at times. Every day we develop more and more advanced technology and it just gets one thinking that how much control we have over it, but then also how much control it'll have eventually over us. And Meekman exploited these errors and instead she used them as tools. Her goal was to deconstruct and then to construct something new, which I thought was really interesting. So a little bit more on glitch art. What I think about glitch art that's pretty, pretty interesting is that through something as an error, which is the glitch in this situation, something that is typically perceived as a bad thing can become something beautiful like art. It's not your standard art style. The artist is purple. Sorry, the artist is purposefully using digital errors to create beautiful and atypical designs. There's a technological, futuristic aesthetic to glitch art that you can't find in traditional art, and that's what makes it stand out so much. It's becoming more and more popular and is breaking through in the art world. So before I get to my sources, I did just want to conclude a little bit on this project and summarize again the two main themes I interpreted from this piece. The first thing being that you can take failures and errors such as, glit as, such as the glitch and you can see them as a bad thing or you can twist it and use it to your advantage or turn it into a good thing. Watching some of Minkman's interviews, she describes her process of how she got involved with glitch art and she said that she would keep getting these glitches and errors in her projects and in her works and it would be so frustrating that she just scrapped the whole thing and start over. She set aside her problems and then tried to start all over again. And it got to the point that she could just see, sorry, she, it got to the point that she saw how she could actually use these glitches to her advantage and use them in her work. I think that can also be a good view on life. Bad things will eventually happen. There's no way around it but it's how you as the individual decide to handle it and use it that will help to better your situation. The next thing that I interpreted from her piece was the, and this is definitely my interpretation, is kind of the humans and technology theme something as powerful as technology, it, it's getting to the point where it's, it's in a way controlling us and it's, it's in our lives. We're pretty much at a point in society where we can't live without it. It's so prevalent. And with this idea of the glitch, which is an error in the technology, it's interesting to see how we then kind of reverse the role and the human is able to take control of this error, of this glitch, and use it to our advantage. We're still enhancing the technology even though it's, there's something wrong with it, something wrong. Okay, and here are all the links to all of the sources that I used in this project. And thank you so much for watching.